saw the beautiful sunset, but I saw this form in the sky that was amazing. Crazy sky sightings, signs of something more. A divine intervention, perhaps? Picture this. You're just chilling, looking up at the big blue sky, watching clouds float by and birds do their thing. Suddenly, something totally weird and out of the ordinary pops up, and it's so shocking it makes you wonder if you're dreaming. We're talking about unreal city views floating in the air, strange symbols, and mysterious shapes that might just be signs from above. The sky's been the screen for some of the craziest shows ever. Come with us as we check out the most mind-blowing stuff that's ever happened up in the sky. Stuff so wild it might just mean something big is about to go down. Get ready for crazy sky sightings, signs of something more. In the early peaceful moments of the morning, while everything starts to wake up, history and future predictions mix together, telling us stories about what's still to happen. For hundreds of years, experts, people who believe, and those who are just curious have read through the Bible. Today, we're going to look into the mysterious area of Bible predictions, checking out the signs that are supposed to signal the second coming of the Lord. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Luke 21, 28. Here, it talks about a future filled with a lot of trouble and big changes. There is said to be lots of talk about wars, where countries and places will fight against each other. The world will also face natural disasters like big earthquakes, food shortages, and deadly diseases that will happen in many places. These are signs that a big change is coming. Really bad disasters will happen more often, challenging people's strength to recover, including their faith in the Almighty God, and truly displaying how precious life is. These terrible events have already been long mentioned in the Bible, and will always remind us how important it is to take care of the balance that granted us life on this earth. As we find ourselves at a crucial point where history meets our future, the signs all around us encourage us to think deeply, ask questions, and become more aware. The messages from the Bible, which are filled with ancient mysteries, make us wonder about our role in the big story of time. Are we just watching from the sidelines, or are we actively involved in the story that's happening right now? So, we observe, we wait, and we think. With all these heavenly sightings and divine interventions that will be of great help when the last part of this era is completed, where will we stand in the tale of the second coming? Angels are fascinating and multifaceted beings that serve as God's messengers, warriors, and servants. They are said to be spiritual entities created by God, distinct from humans, and are often portrayed as protectors and guides for individuals and nations. Although the Bible doesn't provide a systematic account of angels, their appearances and actions throughout the scriptures, on the other hand, offer insight into their nature and roles. What is an angel? The word angel comes from the Greek word angelos, which means messenger. This is said to be the key role for angels. They act as messengers from the divine world to ours. A famous example from the New Testament is when the angel Gabriel told Mary she would become a mother, highlighting how angels help connect the divine and the human worlds. How would you describe an angel? Imagine someone who looks a lot like a person, but they have big, beautiful wings on their back like a giant bird. These wings help them to fly between the sky and the earth. Angels are also known for looking very pretty and peaceful, and they have a kind of glow around them, like a soft light that makes you feel safe and happy just by looking at them. But angels do more than just deliver messages. They also protect and guide people. There's a part in the scriptures where it's said that God will instruct his angels to keep people safe making sure they don't even trip over a stone. This idea has brought comfort to many people over the years, showing how God looks after us with the help of angels. Do angels appear today? Throughout history, various spiritual and religious texts have talked about angels showing up in our world in ways we can actually see or feel. Sometimes, it's like something straight out of a dream or vision, but other times, it gets really real, with angels taking on a form that looks pretty human, glowing with light or even flaunting those iconic wings. There are various reports of angel sightings. Now, across the globe and throughout history, there have been numerous accounts of people claiming to have seen angels. We're talking about those moments when someone insists they've encountered a being of light, maybe even with wings, appearing in times of need or at pivotal moments in their lives. Now, why do they pop up? Well, it's not just random. Angels often come with a mission, Maybe they've got a message straight from the divine, 
some guidance to share, a warning to give, or some much-needed comfort during tough times. And let's not forget, they're also known to step in and protect people from danger. These moments can be super personal, like during a deep prayer or when you're really seeking some answers, but there are also big deal historical moments where angels have made an appearance to key figures or during important events. For example, in the book of Luke, Gabriel visits Mary with a life-changing message. Luke 1 to 28 says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. As Christians, we are all familiar with this very important event, as it announces the birth of Jesus, showing angels acting as divine messengers. Then there's the story of Jacob wrestling with an angel in Genesis 32, 24, 30. This intense encounter is not just a spiritual metaphor, but a physical struggle that leaves Jacob with a permanent limp. This passage vividly illustrates the tangible, physical nature of angelic interactions with humans. Angels also appear as protectors and guides. In the book of Exodus, an angel leads the Israelites out of Egypt and through the wilderness. Exodus 14, 19 says, Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them. This shows angels actively guiding and protecting God's people. Moreover, angels are depicted as delivering important messages from God. In the book of Daniel, an angel helpfully explains Daniel's visions, providing insight into future events. Daniel 8, 15, 17 mentions, While I, Daniel, was watching the vision and trying to understand it, there before me stood one who looked like a man, and I heard a man's voice from the Ulai calling, Gabriel, tell this man the meaning of the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was terrified and fell prostrate. These examples from the Bible clearly show that angelic appearances are not just symbolic, but are described as real events where angels interact with humanity in significant ways, delivering messages, offering guidance, and providing protection as directed by God. It's these passages that lend a strong biblical foundation to belief in the reality of angels and their active involvement in the world. But here's the thing. How we perceive these angelic visits can really vary from person to person. It's all about what you believe your cultural background, and your personal spiritual journey. For some, an angelic visit is a powerful spiritual affirmation, like a clear sign that there's something bigger out there looking out for us. For others, it's more about the symbolism, like finding a deep sense of peace or a spark of inspiration just when you need it most. So to sum it up, when we talk about angelic appearances, we're exploring the many ways angels are said to show up in our lives, whether it's to communicate, guide, protect, or just give us a bit of comfort. And regardless of how you see it, there's no denying that there's something pretty special about the idea of these divine beings making their presence known, wrapped in an aura of something truly beyond this world. Other Signs Other Heavenly Signs The Bible mentions some pretty amazing signs in the sky that people might see. Imagine looking up and seeing things happening that aren't just your usual sunsets or shooting stars. First off, Think about the sun and the moon doing things they normally don't. The Bible says there might be times when the sun looks like it's not shining as brightly as it should, and the moon might not light up the night like we're used to. It's like they're both taking a little break. Then, there are stars. We're not talking about just making wishes on falling stars. The Bible suggests there could be a lot of them dropping from the sky, way more than what we call a meteor shower. It would be like a big celestial light show that tells us something major is happening. And it's not just about things going dark or stars falling. The Bible also talks about the sky showing signs that are hard to miss. Stuff that's out of the ordinary and makes everyone look up in wonder. It could be strange patterns of light or other things that we don't see every day, making it feel like the whole universe is putting on a show. All these signs in the sky are like big, flashing arrows pointing to the fact that something really important is about to happen. Something that changes everything. It's like the sky itself is telling us to get ready and pay attention because the second coming is close. In the Bible, there are specific verses that paint a vivid picture of the heavenly signs associated with the second coming. For instance, 
Matthew 24 29 tells us. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. This verse gives us a dramatic image of the sky changing in ways we've never seen, with the sun dimming and the stars seemingly tumbling down. Then there's Luke 21:25, where it says, There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. This adds to the picture by not only talking about the disturbances in the sky, but also how these signs will affect the world, causing widespread confusion and fear. These verses suggest that the approach of the second coming will be marked by extraordinary cosmic events, serving as a clear signal to the world that a momentous event is about to unfold. The Book of Revelations These brings us to the Books of Revelations. The Book of Revelation gives us a vivid picture of Jesus' second coming, and it's pretty epic. Think of it as the grand finale where Jesus returns, not quietly but in full glory and power. In Revelation 19, 11, 16, it describes Jesus riding from heaven on a white horse, ready to defeat evil once and for all. He's called faithful and true, and the word of God, and he's leading the armies of heaven. This moment is all about justice and setting things right. Jesus is depicted as a king who's going to rule with fairness, and he's got this title, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, to show he's the ultimate boss. It's a scene that promises a future where good wins over bad and peace is restored. For believers, it's a hopeful message that, no matter how tough things get, there's a promise of a better world with Jesus in charge. Significance of the Book of Revelations Believing in the Book of Revelation is like having a guidebook for some of the biggest mysteries about how things will turn out in the end. It's the last book in the Bible, and it shares some pretty big news about what's expected to happen in the future like the final battle between good and bad, and how everything will be made right again. This book is important because it gives us hope and a promise that no matter how tough things get, there's something amazing waiting for us. It tells us that the good guys win in the end, and it encourages us to stick to doing the right thing, even when it's hard. Revelation also reminds us that there's a plan for the world and for us. It's like when you're going through a tough time, and someone you trust tells you, don't worry, I've got this. It helps you keep going. Believing in Revelation can motivate us to be better people, live with kindness, and help others. Knowing that all the challenges we face now are part of a bigger picture that ends in a beautiful, peaceful world. Eh. The book might seem a bit scary with all its talk about big battles and end of the world stuff, but at its heart, it's really a big love letter from God. It shows us that no matter how crazy or scary things get in the world, God has a plan to fix everything and make it beautiful again. It's like God is saying, I've got your back, and in the end we'll all be together in a perfect place, full of love and peace. So, even when Revelation talks about tough times, it's really reminding us that God's love is so strong that he's going to make everything right for us. The application to our lives. So, my friends, what can we learn from the heavenly sightings, divine interventions, and the book of Revelations? And what does it mean for us as Christians? How can we apply its message to our lives? From the heavenly signs and the book of Revelation, we can learn that life is full of big events and changes, kind of like a wild and exciting story. These signs and stories tell us that even when things seem really tough and confusing, there's a plan in place, and everything will work out in the end. It's like when you're reading a book with lots of twists and turns, but you know there will be a happy ending. Revelation teaches us to stay strong, keep doing good, and trust that there's a bigger picture we might not see right now. It also reminds us that being kind, brave, and faithful is super important, especially when facing challenges. So, even though some parts of Revelation might seem a bit scary, the main takeaway is about hope, courage, and the promise of a beautiful, peaceful world ahead. As Christians, applying the message of these to our lives means living each day with hope and purpose. Think of it like this. If you knew a really important guest was coming to your house, you'd probably clean up, get ready, and maybe even change some of your usual routines to make a good impression. In a similar way, knowing about the promises and warnings in Revelation encourages us to clean up our lives by being kinder, more loving, and living the way Jesus taught us. It's not just about waiting for the future, it's about making the best of today. When we hear about heavenly appearances, it's like getting a reminder from above that there's more to life than just our daily routines. 
It's a nudge to look beyond our immediate concerns and think about how we can make the world a better place. Like helping a friend in need, standing up for what's right, or just spreading a bit of kindness. The Book of Revelation, with all its visions and symbols, ultimately talks about victory, peace, and a beautiful ending where everything is made right. So, in our everyday lives, we can hold on to that hope, especially in tough times, and try to share it with others. It's about being a light in the dark, just like the stars in the sky, reminding everyone that no matter how dark the night gets, dawn is coming. So, by living with kindness, courage, and faith, and by helping and loving others, we're not just waiting for the promises of revelation to come true. We're actively being part of making the world a better place, ready for whatever comes next. So my friends, I hope this video has helped you to understand more about Jesus' second coming, all the signs and the scriptures in the book of Revelations, and what it means for us as Christians. I hope it has encouraged you to appreciate God's mercy, grace, and salvation, and to prepare yourself for His return. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us the signs, the angels to help us, and the chance of the second coming. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for rising from the dead and for ascending to heaven. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit and for preparing a place for me. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, and the Savior of the world. I repent of my sins, and I trust in you. I obey your commands, and I follow your example. I welcome you into my heart, and I look forward to your return. Please help me to share your gospel with others and to live for your glory. Amen. Amen. Amen.